Yeah, you can't avoid economic shocks. Uh, you know, sort of uh, in the business cycle, there will be you know challenges, and the AAC does not uh, give ASEAN as a whole the ability to adjust uh, its uh, fiscal policies or its monetary policies uh, to face the kinds of shocks uh, that uh, can challenge the different countries of ASEAN. So the the individually, you know, have to uh, measure up to those shocks as, as is happening uh, now, for example. Therefore, they have to be careful in terms of how they conduct their economy and their politics as well. But uh, let's just talk about the economy, you know, how they conduct their, their economy. I mean, in terms of, uh, say, say, countries like Malaysia, essentially the same sort of things that has always been the case. You make sure you're fiscally strong. Uh, that you don't have a deficit in your economy, you know, and that, that uh, you must make sure your corporate sector does not borrow offshore mm -hmm. if it's got no offshore earnings, you know, uh, you know, uh, and therefore Malaysia has done quite well in that you make sure that your banking system is stable uh, and so on and so forth, you know. And of course, you know, there are political uh, issues also, you know, that are affected in, in Malaysia, in Thailand, in ASEAN as a whole economy will, will not be able to do it. However, coming back to your AEC situation, if the AEC is able to generate greater growth and see stronger companies emerge, you know, then it is obviously not going to, to, going to be less affected, I'm not say unaffected, mm -hmm. but less affected by these forces from the outside because there's going to be an AEC reality Mm -hmm. There is going to be an ASEAN reality which, which keeps to support, mm -hmm. you know, the, the growth of this country. But it does not take away from the fact that they must make sure individually, you know, that they are fiscally strong. Stay. So the resilience comes from the, the greater growth in the wider AEC and from the particular policies uh, in mm -hmm. terms of, of discipline, fiscal discipline uh, and, and monetary discipline. And, and, and then you have to restructure your economies. I mean, for example, your export sector to China mm -hmm. uh, cannot be over dependent on commodities. Mm -hmm. The Chinese economy also is changing in terms of the composition of demand that China wants. It's not the same old electronic, electrical, mm -hmm. uh, or palm oil kind of demand. I mean, they have they want more sophisticated stuff, they want different types of products that China wants, finished products perhaps, not uh, you know, inputs mm -hmm. into, 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 into China's growth. And then it's going to be Chinese uh, investment is going to increase. Uh, so, you know, China can, is going to be a center of, 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 of growth in uh, Southeast Asia, in ASEAN as well quite apart from ASEAN's own mm -hmm. investment and so on, sustaining itself. Mm -hmm. So businesses, through the dynamics of the market, mm -hmm. will bring about outcomes that will uh, hold together the AEC or bring together more closely, you know, that, that common market. I mean, uh, not, I better not be careful not use the term common market, it can be defined differently, yeah, you know, to bring market. about that, that integrated market, you know, that integrated market. So it is happening, businesses are doing it. That's in terms of business decisions independent of the AEC process. The second level of which businesses can help, you know, to, to achieve uh, the, the AEC targets mm -hmm. is by being involved in the process of decision making, okay. in the AEC decision making process at I think uh, targeted strategic working groups and committees in that process okay. so as to make the quality of decisions that are moved up and the speed with which decisions are made that are moved up uh, that will help make the AAC uh, more of a reality before they move up to, to uh, senior officials levels or ministerial levels or leaders levels. So you push it up. And then AIB is a great opportunity for Asia and also for ASEAN. Uh, it would be a foundation of greater financing for infrastructure development. And infrastructure development is going to generate growth, you know, both in terms of the activity in the infrastructure development and in terms of the spin-off effects huh, of, the, of the existence of that infrastructure. It's going to be a fantastic uh, thing uh, for uh, the ASEAN region. So that is one, you know, stimulus plus 
The thing is, ASEAN companies uh, and other multinationals should look at what, how, which way the AIIB is going to go, you know, and look for the uh, opportunities that's going to come, and then from that see the connectivity that is a result of the infrastructure development. And don't forget, you know, the, the infrastructure development is such an important aspect of total development. And don't forget that infrastructure development generates other activities yeah, in the economy. And, and also, you know, don't, don't forget that uh, you know, infrastructure development improves the connectivity that for trade uh, opportunities, logistical support opportunities. So you know, it is very important, it's a great plus that uh, this is happening.